it doesn't turn off. If it does, let me know. It does that sometimes. Today's learning targets, um, we're going to focus in on the essential question number five, what kind of voice is most effective in this form of writing? And what's the purpose of applying grammar mechanics skills in my writing? We're going to look at style, learning target number eight, <coughs> which reads, choose punctuation for effect. So please date that. Today's date, April 12th. And then um, we're also going to look at specific punctuation marks that you can use for an effect, which is why we're looking at both style and conventions today. Last time we focused fully on this was in learn, um, unit number one uh, in the first nine weeks. So we're going back to the conventions learning target of use commas, parentheses, and dashes to set off your ideas in your writing. Um, so you can put 412 for that one as well. But in addition to using commas, parentheses, and dashes to set up our ideas in our writing, we're going to focus in on as we use those remarks, we should be using them to create a specific effect in our poetry. <laughs> so before we look at how to create effect, let's first talk about how to use those marks properly. And on this page, I have a few notes. I would not necessarily write them down unless you don't remember them because we add them in the first nine weeks. So you may already remember this information. If you do, this is just a brief review for you. If you don't, then um, write it down. <coughs> so the comma, the first mark, it creates equality within the sentence. In other words, it doesn't create any emphasis or de-emphasis at all. It keeps everything in that sentence at equal value and equal emphasis. Um, when we talk about using the comma in this sense, we mean to set off extra information. So we're not using it as like a comma in a series. We're not using it as a coordinate um, between two coordinate adjectives. We're talking about using the comma to set off a phrase or to set off a subordinate clause. Because sometimes, you know, you want that pause between your phrase and the rest of your sentence. It creates equality within the sentence when we use that pause, but it still um, sets it off as um, me meaning you, you take a break when you, a slight pause when you're reading it out loud. The other thing, two marks that we're going to talk about, are used in the same manner as the comma. So when you don't want to, <coughs> excuse me, when you don't want to um, create no emphasis within your sentence and you have an extra, an, a phrase or a clause uh, that's subordinate and you want to use that mark to create emphasis or to de-emphasize, you would use one of these two other types in the same place you would normally use a comma. So the dash, it creates a stronger emphasis in that portion of the sentence. It's like an arrow that points to what's next to it. So you create strength that visually makes the reader look at that section more so than the other and the, than the rest of the sentence because it's there. So it emphasizes that part of the sentence. <laughs> when we use parentheses, we are de-emphasizing. In other words, we're making that part of your sentence weaker because our eyes tend to skim over what's inside parentheses. So parentheses weaken a portion of a sentence. The dash strengthens that portion of a sentence. And we say strengthen and weaken, we mean the eyes visually go there, or the eyes visually look past it. And the comma keeps the sentence consistent. It doesn't weaken, it doesn't strengthen, it just sort of creates equality within that sentence. Um, to showcase how to use these three marks for a given effect, I wrote a poem this morning during the testing sessions. Um, to give background to that poem, I'm going to be a little like honest with you. Maybe some of you might be like awkward by it and it might be a little too honest. I apologize if that's the case. Um, last night when I was doing my regular activities out and about, I ran into an individual that I would call an acquaintance of mine. But in my head, I always wondered, why can't we be friends? Why, why do we just say hi every once in a while? Why can't we be closer? And um, we got to talking a little further than we normally do. And she mentioned that she was struggling with some personal issues of like depression and that kind of thing. And it's been something that she's dealt with for years. And as I walked away from that conversation, 
I realized that something that I made fully about me, because I was questioning, like, what did I do wrong? What's wrong with me? Am I not good enough? Why, why don't you want to sort of be my friend? And, like, we can hang out sometime was actually more so about, you know, her dealing with stuff that had nothing to do with me. And I think that too often, like, as people, we think about us and rarely see everybody else. And so I was thinking about that while I was walking around my, my room this morning. I knew I had this lesson, so I figured I'd write a poem and use, as an effect, the parenthesis, the dash, and the comma within a topic about how we really don't see other people clearly um, because of, you know, just our own perspective. When I first wrote it, it sort of looks a little sloppy on the page like this. <clears throat> and then you can see where I implemented my dashes and my parentheses. Notice how they, you can visually see those marks, why they don't create a quality compared to the comma. The commas you, you might not even notice visually in the page, but you can notice where I added those other things, the dash and the parentheses. So I'm going to read through it, and then I'll talk to you about why I use the dash and the parenthesis and the comma within my own piece and what effect I was looking to do. But you'll notice conventions-wise, each of those marks um, that I used, I did them properly. I set off extra information um, with either the comma, the parenthesis, or the dash. They weren't full sentences. They were portions of the sentence where I would normally you know, use the comma. Instead, I used the parenthesis or the dash. So it reads, scars are proof of life. We gain our first one at birth, the visible reminder of our existence. We inflict them on others. We inflict them on ourselves, hiding the proof of our existence. So the world sees perfection rather than pain. We cover them, medicate them, ignore them. Mommy, what's wrong with that man's face? Shh, don't look, pretend it's not there. Trapped in our own perspective, blatantly refusing to see the marks of our humanity. So within this piece, um, I chose to use the comma <coughs> a couple times right here, trapped in our own perspective, comma, blatantly refusing to see the marks of our humanity. I felt like I wanted to keep that ending all equal. It sort of encompasses my message as one final sentence as a whole. So I didn't want to highlight one aspect over the other with the emphasis of the dash. And I didn't want to de-emphasize any portion of that with the parentheses. So I kept it equal and used the comma. But in the other parts, I purposely used the dash twice, right here after hiding the proof of our existence, and right here before, or right here before hiding the proof of our existence, and right here before the word shh. <coughs> I did that on purpose. I wanted to focus the attention on um, what we do sometimes to make sure that other people don't notice things about us. But also I wanted to highlight the idea of parents like to teach children from a young age not to notice the imperfections about other people. Because you always see children walking around and like they'll know, they might like, hey, look at that person's weird eyeballs or whatever. They'll like mention it and then the parents are always like, seriously, stop talking. Shh. And then an awkward moment. So we're teaching our kids to hide those things that are fully making us human. And I wanted to showcase that with the dash there and there. Uh, the areas that I put in parentheses to de-emphasize, I actually did it to de-emphasize and show that connection between what we are looking to show to people. Like here, I put the word perfection. And then I de-emphasize what we don't want to show to people rather than pain. De-emphasizing that, you know, we want to show this, we don't want to show that. And then here, I emphasized the parent teaching them to be quiet. And then I put here what <laughs> I wanted to de-emphasize that concept of how we are all sort of like secretly thinking, okay, don't notice this about me. I don't want people to know. I don't want people to know. So I wanted to de-emphasize that by putting it in the parentheses. So within your own writing, you need to focus in on, if you do this learning target, they're sort of hand in hand. What effect are you creating with the punctuation mark of the dash, the comma, and the parenthesis? And are you using the dash, comma, and parenthesis properly as you're conveying that effect? That's what you want to consider as you write today. So go ahead and get writing.